Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper and we're going to try to record this video again. So to start with, it's been about a week since we've installed the EFI on the Mustang and it's about time to discuss some of the issues that I encountered during the install and my general thoughts on the system. So let's start with the biggest issues I encountered during the install. The first issue and probably the most annoying issue that I encountered during the installation was attempting to get the unit to idle properly. When we first installed the unit, it would not idle below 2000 RPM. And every time I would try to adjust the screw to control idle here, which prescribes an initial break to the throttle plate, an amount that keeps it open at all times, the idle would go bonkers. And that was because the IACV, the idle air control valve, was attempting to fight me in this reset of the system. So in order to get everything dialed in as I needed to, I needed to take the IACV out of the system and make it not be part of the formula while we were discovering what the idle could be. To do that, there is a triangular port next to the intakes on the unit that I placed a piece of tape over, removing its ability to draw in air past the throttle plate. This allowed me to adjust the throttle screw in the mechanical idle adjustment to a point where the engine would just barely run and it was just barely getting any air, then allow the IACV to take over by pulling the tape off. And then I could adjust from there to get it to where it was within 50 to 100 RPM of the idle point I wanted with the IACV engaged. For this engine in particular, with the automatic transmission, I've set it to about 700 RPM, and that seems pretty good for these cams to still build vacuum and to not have too much of a lopy idle and die. The second issue I encountered with the installation was finding a clean ignition signal source for the unit. The computer requires that an ignition power source be stable at both ignition on as well as cranking. In order to find this, I tested every wire I could under the dashboard because I really wanted to splice in somewhere safe from the weather. But unfortunately, because of the way the previous owner hodgepodge together the wiring, I could not find a steady source. So I had to come out here and grab one out of the engine bay that runs to the starter solenoid. It is the brown wire, for those of you with a 67 Mustang, that want to catch it before it runs through the factory regulator and back to the starter solenoid. So far, it seems to be a perfectly good source, although I do not like having a splice here in the old brittle harness in the engine bay. So I will probably be recutting and splicing this entire loom here with more modern DW connectors and making sure it's more weatherproof going forward. But ultimately, I haven't had any electrical issues with the unit, so that's a bonus. And the overall wiring of this unit, barring the need for any of the more advanced wiring looms, is actually very straightforward and required essentially four, four or five wires. Another more minor issue I encountered with this kit installation was the feel of throttle tip-in. So throttle tip-in is the point when you very first begin to engage the throttle and the plates open to allow more air into the engine. My issue was every time you would start to engage the process, it felt as though there was a slight stick to the sensation of the throttle movement, which would cause it to break free, engage the TPS at a larger amount than you were expecting, then become very linear and predictable. It created a surging sensation as you would leave a stoplight or when you would attempt to rev the engine, because you would get this initial massive surge out of the injectors as they compensated for this big initial TPS sensor reading, and then it would begin turning normally. To compensate for that, I added a spring back to the existing plate that I believe was originally for my kickdown linkage for the automatic transmission that allows me to have a constant amount of tension applied to the unit that is greater than that initial brake loose. That makes it much more predictable and smooth when you initially idle off the line at low RPM and low throttle, as well as giving the pedal a heavier feel to make it feel as though it's actually engaging something, something substantial. 
So if you're having a similar problem with not liking the feel of this unit compared to a carburetor, it's probably the need for an additional spring to add some load to the unit. Now the largest issue I have with the installation of this kit isn't even related to the Sniper EFI unit itself, it's related to the Sniper EFI fuel tank conversion. This fuel tank conversion is such that the fuel pump being on top requires these lines to run through the trunk space. That means they're now exposed to anything anybody throws in the trunk that can cause damage without building some sort of false floor for the trunk, as well as any fuel leaks you experience are now trapped within this virtually sealed component of the trunk, which happens to have electrical and lights in it, which is a perfect recipe for an explosion. So to give me a little bit better peace of mind, I will be replacing all of these rubber lines, not with the braided lines that I had initially planned, but with hard aluminum lines all the way back to the fuel pump. These new hard lines will come back to the fuel pump, connect with good AN fittings to cemented PTFE uh, fuel grade sealed um, quarter NPT fittings that will be way pressure tested beyond what this tank will actually be experiencing. And then we'll run these solid lines all the way up the body of the car down the top of the transmission tunnel as tightly as possible to the firewall just behind the engine, at which point I will transition with more AN adapters from the hard aluminum lines to softer braided lines to actually connect to the EFI unit. That should give me much more confidence that this kit won't try to kill me in about the next 10 years. So in conclusion, what are my thoughts on this kit? My initial conclusion with this kit after a week of use is that I actually really like it. The programming and the fuel mapping is actually quite remarkable and that out of the box with almost no learning and no configuration, it ran as good or better than the carburetor that had been tuned on the car especially given the fact that this has an aftermarket intake manifold, aftermarket cams, completely different parameters to have to adjust to, it did it flawlessly. It has never died and it has never given me pause to want to take it out for a drive. It just works. The wiring is very simple and straightforward, although it may be difficult to hide in some engine bays. I would ultimately suggest just taking extra time, maybe four days for an install so that you have time to sort out where your wiring wants to go, where you're gonna run your fuel lines, etc. If you're considering doing the Sniper EFI fuel tank conversion as well on a car like this, which will now have fuel lines in the trunk, I would also allocate time to building something to cover that and give some protection to the top of the fuel tank. In this situation, I would almost always recommend hard lines over any other lines because you really don't want them moving and having the ability to begin leaking in your trunk. The last thing you want is a trunk full of gasoline and vapors while you're driving down the road with a car that has lighting and old wiring in the same place as the fuel leak. If I had this to do over again, I would probably still look to do the Sniper EFI fuel tank conversion on this car simply because of the other issues I was having but I would do so over a longer period of time and then built the false floor and done hard lines from the beginning. So in my very next revision of this, I will be replacing these rubber lines with hard lines and I will be building something to cover it and protect it when people throw things in the trunk. All in all, that's not really the fault of the Sniper EFI kit itself so much as supporting materials. The actual Sniper EFI unit seems great it's built really well, and I would definitely recommend it if you're on the fence about a carbureted solution versus a simple installation EFI system. Obviously, this EFI system is not going to beat something like an OEM EFI solution or direct port solution on a more modern engine, but it works really well out of the box and beats the heck out of having to tune in a fresh carburetor from scratch. So I will be doing a follow-up video in the future where I will do a more detailed breakdown of a more long-term use of this car, as well as revisiting it after I fix the fuel line issues I have with it, finished out the trunk, and probably rebuilt the engine. So thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.